Chapter 15 of The Life of Benjamin Franklin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Life of Benjamin Franklin by Samuel G. Goodrich. Chapter 15 Disputes with the Proprietaries. Franklin sent by the Assembly to London appointed general agent for the colonies, university honors, the Armonica, murder of the friendly Indians. Soon after his return to Philadelphia, Franklin was appointed by the assembly upon a very important mission. From the earliest establishment of Pennsylvania, there seems to have been a spirit of dispute among its inhabitants. During the lifetime of William Penn, the Constitution had been three times altered. After this time, quarrels were continually arising between the proprietaries or their governors and the assembly. The proprietaries were the descendants of those to whom the lands were originally granted by the king. They claimed particular privilege for their estates and, among other things, that they should be free from taxes. To this the assembly would by no means consent. This subject of dispute interfered in almost every question and prevented the passage of the most necessary laws. The assembly at length resolved to appeal to the king against the unjust claims of the proprietaries and appointed Franklin as their agent to go over to England and present their petition. After some delay and detention by the governor, under the pretense of bringing about an accommodation, Franklin sailed from New York towards the end of June and arrived in London on the 27th of July, 1757. According to the instructions which he had received from the legislature, Franklin had a meeting with the proprietaries who then resided in England and endeavored to prevail on them to give up their pretensions. Finding it impossible to derive any satisfaction from them, he laid his petition before the council. During this time, the governor of Pennsylvania had consented to a law imposing a tax in which no distinction was made in favor of the estates of the Penn family. Alarmed at this intelligence, and by Franklin's exertions, they used their utmost endeavors to prevent this law from receiving the royal approbation. They represented it as highly unjust, designed to throw the burden of supporting government upon them, and tending to produce the most ruinous consequences to them and their posterity. The cause was very fully examined before the King's Privy Council. The Penn family here found some very earnest advocates, while those were not wanting ready to espouse the side of the people. After some time spent in debate, a proposal was made that Franklin should solemnly engage that the tax should be so made that the proprietary estates should pay no more than a fair proportion. This he agreed to perform, and the Penn family withdrew their opposition to the passage of the law. After this business was thus happily concluded, Franklin remained at the court of Great Britain as agent for the province of Pennsylvania. The extensive knowledge which he possessed of the situation of the colonies and the regard which he had always shown for their interests occasioned his appointment to the same office by the colonies of Massachusetts, Maryland, and Georgia. His conduct in this situation increased the reputation and esteem in which he was held among his countrymen. Franklin was now in the midst of those friends whom he had acquired by his fame as a philosopher. He was very much sought after by them. Honors from learned societies and colleagues were continually heaped upon him. The University of St. Andrews in Scotland conferred on him the degree of Doctor of Laws. Its example was followed by the universities of Edinburgh and Oxford. His correspondence was sought by the most distinguished philosophers of Europe. Although Franklin was now principally occupied with political pursuits, 
he found time for his favorite studies. He extended his researches in electricity and in other interesting subjects of natural philosophy. The tone produced by rubbing the brim of drinking glass with a wet finger is familiar to everyone. An Irish gentleman by the name of Puckridge, by placing on a table a number of glasses of different sizes and tuning them by partly filling them with water, endeavored to form an instrument upon which he could play tunes. He died before he had completed his invention. Some improvements were afterwards made upon his plan. The sweetness of the tones induced Franklin to try a number of experiments, and he at length formed the instrument which he has called the harmonica. In the summer of 1762, he returned to America. He received the thanks of the Assembly of Pennsylvania, as well for the faithful discharge of his duty to that province in particular. As for the many and important services done to America in general during his residence in Great Britain, a compensation of five thousand pounds, Pennsylvania currency was decreed him for his services during six years. During his absence, Franklin had been annually elected member of the Assembly. On his return to Philadelphia, he again took his seat in that body and continued steadily to protect the rights and interests of the people. In December 1762, a great alarm was excited in the province by the following circumstances. Several Indians resided in the county of Lancaster, who had always conducted themselves as friends to the white men. A number of inhabitants upon the frontiers, who had been irritated by repeated injuries, determined to seek revenge on all the Indians who fell in their way. About a hundred and twenty persons assembled and proceeded on horseback to the settlements of the defenseless Indians. These were now reduced in number to about twenty. They had received information of the intended attack, but did not believe it. As the white people had always been their friends, they feared no danger from them. When the party arrived at the Indian settlement, they found only some women and children and a few old men. The rest were absent at work. The wretches murdered all whom they found and among others the chief Shahehas, who had always been distinguished for his friendship to the whites. The remainder of these unfortunate Indians, who by their absence had escaped the massacre, were conducted to Lancaster, and lodged in the jail as a place of security. Large rewards were offered by the governor for the discovery of the murderers. But notwithstanding this, a party of the same men marched to Lancaster, broke open the jail, and inhumanely butchered the innocent Indians who had been placed there for protection. Another proclamation was issued by the governor, but in vain. A party even marched down to Philadelphia for the purpose of murdering some friendly Indians who had been removed to the city for safety. The citizens armed to protect them. The Quakers notwithstanding they are opposed to fighting, even in their own defense, were most active upon the occasion. The rioters advanced to Germantown, and the governor fled for safety to the house of Dr. Franklin. It was by his assistance and influence that the disturbance was quelled, and the rioters prevailed upon to return to their homes. End of Chapter 15 Recording by Richard Kilmer, Rio Medina, Texas.